ان الحمد لله نمره ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل الله ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تسلون به والرحمه ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وكلوا قولا سديدا يُسْرِلِ لَكُمْ مَلَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا أَمَّا بَعْدُ فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ خَيْرُ الْهَادِي هَادِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَشَرُّ الْأُمُورِ مُدَافَتُهَا وَكُلُّ الْبِدَاعَةِ دَلَالَةٌ وَكُلُّ دَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ مَاي دِيَرْ رِسْبَكْتِدْ بَرَدَرْ سَيْدْ سِسْتِرْ إِنْ إِسْلَامٍ أَغَيْنْ أَيْ غَرِيْتْ يُوْ وِيْتْ غَرِيْتْ يُوْ وِيْتْ غَرِيْتْ Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And again I say to you, Ramadan Mubarak. In this week's address I'd, I'd like to briefly cover the topic of family and how we ought to be uh, dealing with them. I know that a lot of us have, have been confined at home um, over the course of the, of the stay at home order and, and especially for, for people who have lost their jobs and you haven't really had much choice in this matter we've all kind of been uh, those of you that have family and don't live alone have been forced into closer proximity with with your family for better or for worse you know and fortunately we all know that uh, sometimes it's it's the ones who who we're closest to that can really test our patience and and wear our nerves out <laughs> whether you're a parent dealing with uh, disobedient spiteful children or um, your son or a daughter dealing with Uh, emotionally distant cold or unsupportive parents or you know I, I pray especially for my fellow reverts who have non-muslim family that for whatever reason don't like Islam and they their hearts are firmly bound up in chains of, of ignorance and Allah has set a seal upon their heart we'll talk about that a little bit too um, but as Muslims as people um, with a sincere faith we are we're instructed to never never sever the ties of of kinship we're we're people with real family values uh, despite the apathy of the wider culture at large this nihilistic culture that does not val- value family um, just kind of values uh, material um, wealth over everything else we we know who we are as as people and we know that real wealth is is family that the building blocks of an of a nation the building block of our ummah uh, it's it's built upon the the amana the sacred trust of of a family and so we are we're we're people of real family values and when it comes to how we deal with with those within our household our our immediate family we and how we should deal with them we only have to look to to the example of our nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is who we, you know, look to in in all things to kind of give us a guideline for how we should how we should conduct ourselves. And who was he? Well, he was rahmat alamin. He was sent as a mercy to all the worlds, to the world of the seen and the unseen, everything in between. You know, so he he's the most he's he was a merciful person. Um, here's a man who was an orphan, you know, didn't have a father and didn't really have anybody to, to protect him um, when he came with this message of Islam it was his uncle Abu Talib who was protecting him it was the closest thing that uh, that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had to a father because he didn't really have he was an orphan and the thing about Abu Talib is he never never accepted Islam even on his deathbed he he can he wouldn't say la ilaha illallah uh, because he he wouldn't turn his back on on the religion the polytheistic religion of his forefathers he wouldn't turn his back on on the culture that he was brought up in 
I think a lot of us who are converts or reverts have have a similar experience. We have somebody in our family who we love to death. We've conveyed the message. They won't accept it. We know the reality of those who have uh, rejected the truth after it's come to them, after, after, you know, after we've done our best to give it to them. Uh, and it's heartbreaking. So we have this example of, of the uncle of the Prophet وسلم, who would not accept Islam. And that's why the verse in, uh, in Surah Qasas, verse number 56, was revealed as a comfort to our Nabi to Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He said, إِنَّكَ لَا تَحْدِ مَنْ أَحْبَبْ وَلَّكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَحْدِ مَنْ يَشَّاءُ وَهُوَ أَلَّمُ بِالْمُثَّدِينَ The meaning of which is, uh, verily, you will not be able to guide everybody that you love. But Allah guides whomsoever He wills. And He knows best those who receive guidance. So it's, it's it's, it's a bit of a comfort to know that it's you, you might have done your best to convey the message. And the best way to convey the message is by your character. But people will still not accept it. It's, up, it's in God's hands, just as everything is. It's just another thing that you have to accept and say, you know, la wa la illa billah, and move on and do your best in, in everything. You still can't sever the ties of kinship, no matter what, because... The Prophet alayhi salam, he, he didn't with his non-Muslim family. Anyways, back to my point. Um, when it comes to dealing with our family, we have a man who was an orphan, alayhi salatu wasalam, and yet he taught us how to be just, um, to be kind, and to be merciful towards, you know, our children and our spouses, our family. Um, we have an example of the Prophet's special mercy towards, towards children and his family, um, in an authentic hadith from uh, both Bukhari and Muslim, it's an agreed upon hadith. Um, Abu Hurairah reported that Al Akrai ibn Habis, he, he saw the Prophet you know, kissing his grandson Hassan, giving him a kiss. And he said, I, I have ten children myself and I don't kiss any of them. And the Prophet, not missing a beat, وسلم, he said, Verily, whoever doesn't show mercy will not be shown mercy. You know what a what a simple but stunning admonition. You know you have to take you have to be kind and be merciful towards the children. Can't be harsh with people. Um, whenever he would have to give the nasiya, he would he would advise gently. You know he would he would really he spoke simply and he spoke to the hearts of people. He didn't he didn't have to resort to to harshness. Um, and when it comes to our spouses, these these are in a special amana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were trusted to you by Allah, and they were trusted to you by their families. So you have to take special care of that. Like anything that we've been entrusted with, our health, our wealth, our religion, all these things, we're, we're going to be questioned over them. They have a right, and we have, to, we have to take care of these things. So when it comes to, to your wife or your spouse in general, it's... This is something that um, you have to be especially merciful towards. Um, there was a there was an issue uh, within the early community, and some of the women were coming to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and saying, "Our men are very harsh with us. They beat us. It's, it will not stand." And he sallallahu alaihi wasallam he called the people together, and uh, it's from a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, um, in which Abdullah ibn Zama reported that. Uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, How can one of you beat your wife as he beats a stallion or a slave and then embrace her? How, how can you... So, so that's an admonition. How can you be harsh with this person that you're supposed to be gentle with, with somebody that you love? You should be gentle with them, merciful towards them. You shouldn't be harsh like this. Um, with all that said, we have Eid coming up. Uh, we're almost about halfway through Ramadan. It always goes so fast. Um, but we have Eid coming up. So make sure you make a special thing out of Eid, especially for your children's sake if you have children. Even if you don't have children, you got nephews, you got there's children in your family, I guarantee it. Make a thing out of it. Um, because if you don't, they're going to see the celebration of the kuffar and they're going to think that looks appealing. 
you know, child doesn't understand the pagan origins of, of some of what they see. So any anything from Islam within your household, especially something like Eid, make sure you beautify it. You know, I I don't have any Muslim family, but this year I plan on doing something you know special for for the people in my life for Eid. You know, they always make sure to include me in everything. You know, no matter how I feel about it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, so just make 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 something special out of it, you know. It's Eid. We only get two a year. You know, make make something really beautiful out of it. With all that said, Jazakallah uh, khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.